Now I want to talk about how some of the lock bits that we've seen previously in the class get reset at reboot time. I want to see what the documentation says and what it doesn't say about how that happens. So we're going to start with BLE, BIOS Lock Enable. So we said that it, you know, if you reboot the system, it get so if it's locked down, it's locked down until a reboot, but you know, how exactly does that happen? What does that mean? So it says that, you know, setting this to one enables setting the BIOS write enable bit to cause an SMI. And once set, this bit can only be cleared by a plitrist, a platform reset. So what is a platform reset? Well, on this documentation, which talks about platform reset, it says the PCH asserts platform reset during power up and when software initiates a hard reset sequence through the reset control register. IO register CF9. So let's look at CF9, reset control register. It's just a hard-coded always that port. So we look at that and uh, bit two says that this resets the CPU, but when we read it, it says this bit transitions from zero to one and initializes a hard or soft reset determined by the sys reset bit, bit one of this register. Okay, now we need to go look at sys reset bit. This bit is used to determine whether it's a hard or a soft reset. If it's zero, it's soft, and if it's one, it's hard. So we're gonna, this soft one says it activates a NIT. We haven't seen anything about a NIT and it talks about PCI clocks, so we're not gonna care about that one. We're gonna say we only care about this hard reset. So it says when reset CPU goes from zero to one, which is right there, if that goes to zero to one, the PCH performs a hard reset by activating platform reset and sysstat active for a minimum of one millisecond. In this case, sleep S3, sleep S4, sleep S5 state actually depend on the full reset bit. Okay, now we need to go up here, full reset bit. So if this is zero, it says that, you know, when this hard reset happens, if it's zero, the PCH will keep those high. So those are only active when they're low because it has that hash at the end. So keeping them high means basically it's not asserting those. Whereas if it's one, a full reset, so a hard full reset will drive these low, activating them for three to five seconds. So basically, it's going to force all of those to turn off the power to all of those devices for three to five seconds, and that should really power down all of those things. And then it mentions additionally, if this bit is set, so if that's set, then there's some other resets, the sys reset, the power okay, watchdog timer resets, which will also push down all of these things to kill the power to them. So there's one more lock that we saw where it actually said explicitly in the documentation, once set, this bit can only be cleared by a platform reset, and that is SMI lock. That was the one that has to do with locking in the fact that you may not disable SMIs on the system. So you want to keep the global SMI enable set to one so that SMIs are not suppressed. So you set SMI lock, but the SMI lock will go away if the system goes through a platform reset. So at this point, basically we know that platform reset is some signal that is going to be asserted upon reset, but that particular reset could be something like a reset with a hard reset, which is going to assert platform reset, which will also assert the sleep S3 and S4 and S5.